Hi there, it's John with Inspectflix, and in this video, I'm going to describe the terms and uh, installation of footings for foundation poured wall concrete walls, uh, where they should be used uh, underneath load bearing walls, uh, and also the dimensions of the footing itself. Um, so right now, I'm at a brand new construction, hasn't been lived in, they just got done finishing it up, and uh, I believe to have found areas of uh, missing footings. I'm going to show you by using uh, my trick of the trade of tapping on concrete floors. A lot of times when uh, contractors dig out the pit and they put the foundation in, build the house, last thing they do is they backfill the dirt up against the foundation. And a lot of times it doesn't get compacted very good. Uh, and you get the settling on driveway, sidewalks, patios, and porches and such. Uh, but uh, people also um, forget about the slab inside the basement area. Uh, so let me show you an illustration on footings and then I'm going to take you around the perimeter here and show you where I believe there is missing footings under load bearing walls. Um, so right here on the wall I have a very rough uh, draft of an illustration and it shows uh, the basement area and then also the uh, floor above with its stud uh, walls and headers and openings and such. So always at the base where it starts you have your footing and that footing is what holds the foundation in place. Um, um, and actually what it does is the weight load distribution from all of the house onto the foundation sits onto the footing and the footing spreads that weight load out to the sides. And so that this is your main key uh, for stability of the structure. So this footing um, should be the um, double the width of what the foundation is. So your standard foundation is 8 inches wide and uh, this should be 16 inches wide. So you're giving it a good spread and the bigger it is the better. So you can go even 20 inches if you wanted to uh, on the distribution of that. Um, and then your slab would rest on the footing on the interior. So this is going to be typically like a four inch difference right in that area there. And I'm going to show you in just a moment here. So um, again, tapping on concrete floors. This is my flathead screwdriver I like to use um, when looking for voids and missing soil under concrete. So right here, this is your foundation wall. And then down below on the slab, you'll notice that there's a hairline crack. This hairline crack is consistent. And what it's doing is it's following uh, the footing below and you can actually see right here it's about four inches um, so all of that looks about right um, so this side of the crack here's the footing sounds dense this side is the, the uh, void hollow so you can clearly tell the difference there so as we go around I'm going to show you the load bearing walls here should also have footings below them. And how you can tell that they're load bearing is, is they typically would put a header above the door openings and also distribution of the uh, floor joists. And I'll talk to you about that in one moment. So let's go ahead and do some tapping here and I'll show you. Very hollow. And as you saw earlier, it should be at least four inches down uh, or width um, on each side of the sole plate more dense out here very hollow very hollow very hollow very very hollow it's almost as if they like I said there's no footing Okay, now on this area here, once again, we have a load-bearing wall, and you can tell, once again, you have the, the header above the door opening, uh, and then your studs, double top plate, sole plate, and what I did was I measured it with a tape measure, and this is reading out about 15 feet, and um, rule of thumb in the modern carpentry book is uh, there's a chart for distribution on the size of the floor joists you could use, so however far you go, uh, the larger the board is, so say for instance a 2 by 12 you can go as far as up to 14 feet and then you can't go any further. You have to have a load bearing wall to hold that floor joist up. Now when it comes to these engineered floor joists, which has been uh, commonly more used in the last 20 years, these can actually go farther. They can go up to like 17 feet until they need a load bearing wall below it. 
Um, but nevertheless, as I measured it, this is going to be your first wall. Your next wall is not for several more feet, which is going to be another load-bearing wall. But let me show you, once again, these cracks are um, very offset. And let's go back to some tapping here. Hello. Very hollow. Yeah, so it's very hard to tell to see what you got, but I don't hear the density that should be underneath there, and I'm going to say that there is no footing underneath this. Now, the footing could be at another location, and I wouldn't necessarily blame the builder unless they're paying attention, but the builder is separate from the concrete company. Usually the foundation is poured by another contractor and they're looking at the same blueprints. But sometimes people make an alteration in the middle of construction. Say, for instance, they wanted to change that wall out and move it into a different location. And that would uh, really pose a problem without knowing if it's put on its proper footing. Same thing down this wall.